This is example 5.15 on page 198 of our textbook. And this is another example involving redox reactions. Here, we're going to use the oxidation states to actually determine if a reaction is a redox reaction. And if we do figure out that it's a redox reaction, we're going to use the oxidation states to figure out what's oxidized and what's reduced, and in turn, what's the reducing agent and the oxidizing agent. So these definitions are a little bit kind of opposite of what you might think. The element compound that is reduced is itself the oxidizing agent because what happens when something is reduced is it's gaining electrons from something else, therefore aiding in the oxidation of the other compound. The reducing agent is the element compound that itself is oxidized because when something is oxidized, it's losing electrons, it's giving them away to the thing that is reduced. So we'll go through the definitions again once we make those assignments at the end of the problem. So the way that you're gonna solve this is to determine if, if we have a redox reaction occurring, and that's going to be through assigning oxidation states. So first up, we have magnesium plus oxygen gives me magnesium oxide. So on my reactant side, magnesium is by itself in its natural state. It's a solid. There's no charges written next to it. It has an oxidation state of zero. Next up is oxygen. Oxygen's by itself, not in a compound and it's not paired with any other ions or elements, therefore it is also zero for its oxidation state. In my product side, I have magnesium plus oxygen. So magnesium in a compound exists as positive two as um, its oxidation state, and oxygen in a compound exists as minus two. So now we can look between the two and see that magnesium is going from zero to positive two. It's getting more positive, therefore it is oxidized. So we do have a redox reaction occurring. And we always have to have a reduction with our oxidation. So if we look at oxygen, it's going from zero to negative two. So it's becoming more negative, therefore it is reduced. So in this problem, magnesium is oxidized, which means that it itself is the reducing agent because it's aiding in the reduction of the other compound. And oxygen, in this case, is reduced, which means that it itself is the oxidizing agent because it's aiding in the oxidation of the other compound. So now let's look at um, equation B, where we have HBr plus CaOH2 gives me water and CaBr2. So we've got to do the same steps again, where we assign oxidation states to everything, determine if a redox reaction is occurring, and if one is, we figure out what's oxidized and what's reduced. And in turn, that tells us the reducing agent and oxidizing agent. So for HBr, H in a compound is always typically plus one. If we're trying to add to zero, that would make bromine minus one. For calcium hydroxide, hydrogen in a compound is typically plus one. Oxygen is typically minus two. And calcium in a compound, since it's an alkali earth metal, is always plus two. 
and we can double check to make sure all of these charges add up to zero if we want to. Plus two, plus two times negative two is minus four, plus two times positive one is plus two, which gives me zero oxidation state, so we can confirm. For H2O, oxygen is gonna be minus two, a single hydrogen will be plus one, and we can double check that that gives us zero oxidation state. If we have positive one, there's two of them, they contribute plus two, plus negative two from the oxygen gives us zero. And then finally, for calcium bromide, calcium in a compound is going to be plus two because it's an alkaline metal. And if we have two bromines that need to contribute enough to give us an overall charge of zero, that means each bromine is gonna be minus one. And we can double check that this adds to zero by doing two plus negative one times two gives me negative two, which also gives me zero. So now if we look at the individual element oxidation numbers, hydrogen on the product and reactant side is plus one. So that hasn't changed oxidation state. Bromine on the reactant and product sides is minus one. That hasn't changed oxidation states. Calcium on either side is plus two. Oxygen on either side is minus two. And then we can also compare again hydrogen, which is plus one on both sides. So no oxidation states is changing, which means this is not a redox reaction. So we can't make any assignments to what's oxidized or reduced because it's not a redox. I'll just put an X through it. Now our last example, C, um, it's a little bit kind of easier of an example between the three because um, we just have elements by themselves, so we don't have to infer anything. So zinc by itself, no charge written next to it, is going to have an oxidation state of zero. Iron with a two plus written next to it tells us that its oxidation state is plus two. Zinc with a two plus written next to it tells us that the oxidation state is plus two. And then iron as a solid, no charge written next to it, it's by itself that's gonna have an oxidation state of zero. So now we can compare between the reactants and product. Zinc is going from zero to plus two. That means it is being oxidized. It's getting more positive. Iron is going from plus two to zero, meaning it's getting more negative and therefore it is reduced. So that means in this example that zinc is oxidized and therefore is the reducing agent because it's aiding in the reduction. And that means that the iron two plus reactant is reduced and is itself the oxidizing agent. I think I spelled that wrong, but that's okay. So hopefully this makes sense to you. We can only have a redox reaction if we're changing oxidation states, and whatever is oxidized is the reducing agent, whatever is reduced is the oxidizing agent.